O Lord our God, may the receiving of this sacrament and the acknowledging of the Holy and Eternal Trinity and its undivided unity profit us unto health of mind and body. Words taken from today's post-communion prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Recently, Holy Mother Church celebrated the great feast of St. Anthony of Padua, a holy member of the Franciscan family, a patron of the poor, a doctor of the church, and a tremendous preacher whose very tongue remains incorrupt and totally intact, though he died back in the 13th century. St. Anthony's sermons were so inspiring that his fame spread throughout all of France and Italy, especially during the last decade of his holy life. At one time, it is said that St. Anthony was sent to a town in Italy that happened to be a hotbed of heresy, a lot of false belief and false teaching. The city leaders ordered everyone to ignore the preaching of St. Anthony. And so no one turned up for his sermons. Wherever Anthony went, he was greeted by silence. St. Anthony walked along praying, reflecting upon what to do in the midst of such stubborn people. And as he was walking, St. Anthony came upon a large body of water. And the Holy Ghost then moved him to preach a great sermon, not to the people of the town, but rather to the fish in the water. He called out, quote, You fish of the river and sea, listen to the word of God, because the heretics do not wish to hear it. And suddenly there were thousands of fish, neatly arranged in rows, all pushing their heads up through the surface of the water, as if they were straining to listen to every word spoken by St. Anthony. The stubborn people of that Italian town, seeing this wondrous miracle, gathered to listen finally to Anthony. And they were convicted by his words. They realized their errors and the grace of the Holy Ghost working through the tongue of St. Anthony brought about their total conversion. As many of you might know, St. Anthony is also invoked as the patron saint of lost things. A little jingle, perhaps many of you know it, goes like this. St. Anthony, please look around. Something is lost and must be found. Now, why is it that St. Anthony is called upon to find lost things? Well, it's based upon an incident that happened in the life of the Holy Saint. It seems that there was a novice, a novice, it seems, an apprentice, if you will, in the religious life that decided to leave the friary and to go home. But it is said that the novice stole a very valuable book, a breviary or a prayer book used by St. Anthony. And when St. Anthony couldn't find his prayer book, St. Anthony prayed very hard that it would be found and returned to him. And the story goes that while walking down the road, that thieving novice encountered a demon wielding an axe who threatened to kill him if the youth did not return to the friary and return Anthony's prayer book. The novice quickly retraced his steps, prostrated himself at the feet of St. Anthony, returned the book, and begged forgiveness. St. Anthony forgave him. And that novice became a very holy member, a friar of the Franciscan order. Today, St. Anthony's prayer book is now held in the Franciscan friary in Bologna, Italy. But another famous miracle is more important for today. The famous miracle of St. Anthony involved the defense of the real and substantial presence of our dearest Lord in the Holy Eucharist. There was a stubborn heretic named Bonila who mocked the most blessed sacrament and referred to the sacred body and precious blood of Christ in the Holy Eucharist as nothing more than a myth, a fable, a false little story. No amount of teaching, no amount of proofs from scripture or tradition, no amount of words spoken by St. Anthony seemed to do any good. It is said that Bonilla challenged St. Anthony to prove this fable of the Holy Eucharist, and he devised a contest. Bonilo would starve a donkey, would starve a donkey for three days, 
denying it any kind of food whatsoever. Meanwhile, St. Anthony went to the forest where he prayed and fasted for the same three days. And at the end of those three days, St. Anthony returned to the town and he went to the church where he obtained the most blessed sacrament. St. Anthony then went to the town square where that famished donkey was that hadn't eaten for three days. The merchant then placed a bale of fresh hay just a few feet away from the starving donkey. The donkey was untied and walked towards its hay. But it is said that at that moment, St. Anthony exposed the blessed sacrament. And he called the donkey saying, Donkey, in the name of our Lord and God, I command you to come here and adore your creator. All of a sudden, that donkey reared up on its hind legs as if someone had pulled him by a bridle. The donkey then spun around and ran to St. Anthony, dropping to his, its forelegs, hind legs still extended, and put his head down prostrate in a posture of adoration before the Holy Eucharist held by St. Anthony. The heretic Bonilla was stunned at what occurred, and he begged for St. Anthony's forgiveness, and that heretic converted on the spot. And he donated a large amount of money to build a new Catholic church. And on the cornerstone of that very church building, Bonilla placed an engraved picture of St. Anthony holding the Holy Eucharist aloft and the donkey kneeling on his forepaws in adoration of the body of Christ. A mere donkey, a beast of burden, famished, starving, utterly hungry for natural food, turned away from earthly nourishment and adored its creator. It hungered for God, its maker. You know, men hunger for a lot of things. We hunger for a good meal when we're famished. Some like Esau are so sensual and gluttonous that they would sell their very birthright for a bowl of soup. Others might hunger for fame, for popularity, for celebrity status. Some hunger for power over others. Some hunger for fleshly, sensual, and lustful delights. Some filled with greed, hunger for material possessions. And yet once they have filled themselves with the things of the world, once they have gorged themselves with earthly delights, they find themselves utterly dissatisfied. Our hearts are restless until they rest in thee, O God. Our minds and hearts were made for the universal truth and the universal good. And our hunger is only truly satisfied with the infinite, the infinite God. We could learn a lot from that donkey. Would that we could always be hungry for God. Hungry for Christ, the Son of God and the Son of Mary. Hungry for the truth. That would be a way to imitate that donkey in some sense. To imitate that donkey in disdaining all created things in order to adore the Creator. How hungry are we for the most blessed of all sacraments right now? Are we famished for the flesh of the Son of God? Listen to the words of a holy saint, a saint who was starving for the sacred body of Christ in the Holy Eucharist, a saint who thirsted for his precious blood. Consider the words of the great martyr and bishop of the early church, St. Ignatius of Antioch. St. Ignatius of Antioch writes, quote, I hunger for the bread of God, the flesh of Jesus Christ. I long to drink of his blood, the gift of unending love. And then St. Ignatius of Antioch continues, I no longer take pleasure in perishable food or in the lights of this world. I want only God's bread, which is the flesh of Christ, formed of the seed of David. And for drink, I crave his blood 
which is love that cannot perish. Today, we're witnessing six children receiving their first Holy Communion. And they hunger for the Blessed Sacrament. They have witnessed their parents and their older siblings receive, and they were always disappointed that they could not receive in the past. But now it is their time to be filled with the bread of angels. We can learn a lot from these children, and from that donkey we can learn a lot too. But will we learn? How many of us are so filled with the sensual delights of this world that our taste buds seem uninterested in supernatural food? How many of us would be like Esau and sell and exchange sanctifying grace in the soul for a mortally sinful action? These children are hungry for the Eucharistic Lord. They have been waiting to be of age, and now is the time to satisfy their hunger for the Son of God and the Son of Mary. Just a little while longer, and the sacrifice of Calvary will be represented upon the altar in an unbloody manner, and the victim himself will be their food. But know this, first communicants, know this. Christ has been hungry for you, too. He has always thirsted for union with you, and he, too, has longed for this day. You will consume him in Holy Communion, but really, he will consume you and take you ever more into union with himself. When I was a child, just about your age, my mom would read to me from a book called Where the Wild Things Are by the author and illustrator Maurice Sendak. And in one scene of that book, a young boy called Max wants to leave the fanciful island of his dreams filled with beasts and wild things to go back home to his mom. He missed his mom. But the wild things, the beasts say to him, Oh, please don't go. We'll eat you up. We love you so. We'll eat you up. We love you so. That's a strange thing to say. But isn't it true that your parents have at times pretended to devour you? When you were younger, maybe even now, you laugh when your mothers grab you and threaten to eat you up because she loves you so much. Parents will sometimes stuff the feet or fists of their little ones into their mouths and grin, saying, I could just eat you up. Such acts are acts of loving affection. And I assure you that your parents do love you much. And they hunger for your love, too. And if they, your parents, mere creatures, love you and hunger for your love, you can rest assured that the Eucharistic Lord hungers for you and for your love. May your hunger today for the most blessed sacrament remain with you as you grow. Let us hunger for the bread of God, the flesh of Jesus Christ. And let us long to drink of his blood, which is the gift of unending love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.